Hello my beautiful bookish friends! Welcome back to my channel. My name's Emma and I'm so excited because today we're going to be having the ultimate fall bookish day. I'm heading to Barnes & Noble for a little bit. I really want to check out their spooky gift section and some of the spooky reads for October even though I already have a fall TBR that is a mile long but I want to go there. I'm also going to see the movie adaptation of the novel The Storied Life of AJ Fickery which I can't wait for. For those of you who don't know it is about a man named AJ Fickery who owns a bookstore and then he's pretty curmudgeonly. His wife has died but it's basically about how he learns to find connection again with different people in his life and it's so heartwarming so far. I started the book yesterday. I can't wait to see what the movie does with it. I'm a little nervous but we'll see how it goes but I can't wait to take you all along with me today. Now that I'm all food and watered with some pumpkin pancakes, it's time to head into Barnes & Noble. Do I have anything super specific in mind that I'm going to look for? I want to look at the Clothbound Classics for sure. Also want to look at some spooky reads and otherwise just see what we find. I'm so excited! So once inside, I headed straight towards the spooky gift section. They had all these board games on display. And then I noticed the spooky books. Oh, these editions of Frankenstein and Edgar Allan Poe and Dracula and that Dracula puzzle. Just ultimate, ultimate spooky vibes. Then I walked away and this copy of Dracula literally fell off the shelf of its own accord. So I walked over, put it back in its right spot and pray to the spirits of Brom Stoker not to haunt me forever. Sorry, Brom. After that terrifying experience, I went over to the book talk table and played the fun game of Count the Colleen Hoover books. I thought that this cover looked absolutely amazing. Love in the time of serial killers. I love the old fashioned illustration style. Then I went to the candles. I think this first one speaks for itself. There were so many amazing ones, but my absolute favorites are the Patty Wax Library Candles. The Mark Twain one is the best. It smells like campfires and vanilla, and I love it with all my heart. I found the Penguin Classics next. I was really excited to see this copy of Pride and Prejudice that I've been thinking about getting forever, but I just, I don't know. I couldn't quite pull the trigger. I really was wanting to find Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. It's such a perfect classic for this month. I finally find it down here. I love the hearts on the cover and I thought about getting it, but there was a little bit of dirt on the cover and it made me so sad because for a pretty library copy, I don't want it to be damaged. After my Frankenstein dreams were dashed, I decided to go look for a Penguin Classics version of North and Grabby. You all know how much I love a good YA mystery, and it was so exciting to finally add this one to my collection too. And finally, my favorite part, going to the cafe, getting a perfect coffee, and finally looking through all of the books that I've grabbed that day. As you can see, I ended up with quite the stack. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> Thank you for coming along with me to Barnes & Noble today. Oh my gosh, that was the most magical few hours of my life. I'm going to be remembering that for such a long time. I went to a different Barnes & Noble than I usually go to, and this one, even though it was over the weekend, was so much quieter, so much cozier. It was a bit smaller than the one I usually go to, and it really just had the perfect chill vibes that I was looking for, so that was honestly incredible. I figured I would go ahead and start with some of the spooky bookish gifts and like gift items that I got first and then I'll move into the actual books that I got. So the first thing that I got that I'm super excited about, see it right back here, I got this spooky garland at Barnes and Noble and they're actually like cloth little bats and pumpkins and ghosts and I just I knew it would hang so nicely in front of my shelves and I'm just I love them. I love them so much. They're perfect. They're exactly what I needed to like fallify my bookshelf. And the next thing I got um, isn't necessarily a gift, but it's not quite a book, I guess, either. That is a magazine, which I never get, but 
It's a special edition Life magazine all about the Salem witch trials. I was a history major in college and I studied early modern Europe and I actually wrote a thesis on Scottish witchcraft and specifically King James I's demonology. So basically the first written work by a monarch about witchcraft. And so I was really impressed by this one because it has like full page wood panel engravings from the era that talk about the trials and depict the trials. Just, I mean, incredible images. Hard to look at, but just historically incredible. And it also really cites a lot of scholars and everything, which always makes my history and heart happy. So I knew that I had to pick this up as soon as I started looking through it. Uh, so this is the only magazine that I picked up. This next one was definitely an impulse purchase. I saw this on my way out. <laughs> um, this is a set of Jane Austen tarot cards. We'll see if that'll zoom in there. Look how gorgeous this cover is. Oh my gosh. I knew I don't have a tarot deck of my own. Uh, my mom actually has one, so I've used that a few times. I'm not a giant tarot person or anything, but I think that they can be really cool. And the fact that they had a Jane Austen version just I thought was incredible like look at the detail on these cards I I'm in love with this like it's the most perfect Edwardian almost cottagecore tarot set and I can't wait to actually put this to use so <laughs> I've got another Jane Austen item here and that is the world of Jane Austen jigsaw puzzle uh, if you guys can't tell yet, uh, there's a bit of a theme going. I am a tried and true Jane Austen fan. I'm actually named after her novel, Emma, so I just have always felt a personal connection to her books, but I love the detail on this puzzle, the way it incorporates all the different stories, and like just a bookish puzzle in general that has all of the perfect Edwardian images and everything I knew that I had to pick this up as soon as I saw it so as soon as it starts to get cold out I always feel the urge to just sit down with a cup of tea and a giant puzzle to dig into maybe listen to an audiobook while I do it and oh, gosh I'm so excited to do that now and the last sort of gift item that I got is kind of perfect for what I'm doing here um, on this channel. It's a bibliophile reader's journal. So basically it's got, I mean, it ha literally has my name on the cover, right? Austin, Emma, get it? Got it? <laughs> um, the way that this is set up, oh my gosh, it, first of all, it has a page dedicated to famous bookstore cats incredible and then for the actual book reviews themselves they give you space to list the book title author plot notes character notes favorite quotes other books that you've read by this author the date started finished and the rating for the book I figured that with all of the reviews that I plan on doing with this channel having them all in one spot and having the space to write all of these different prompts was just too good to pass up so I cannot wait to start filling this out most likely with my October reads so um yeah perfect perfect thing for me okay so I'm finally diving into the books that I got while I was at Barnes and Noble this time like I said about the puzzle whenever it gets cold outside I just find myself wanting to cozy in and do a puzzle I also love trying to dive into some classics and this is one that I haven't actually read before. You might recognize her from the past, like, two things that I held up. But that is Jane Austen's Northanger Abbey. I really love the Penguin, like, classics edition like these. I obviously am a giant sucker for the Penguin Clockbound classics. They are beautiful. <laughs> there is no comparison for, like, a beautiful library copy of all the favorite classics but since I haven't read Northanger Abbey before I knew that I was going to be wanting to annotate put in some sticky notes really write down my thoughts and dissect this a little bit and I could not bear the thought of doing that to a beautiful penguin classics like I feel like I have two book moods right like I either want a classic that's completely dog-eared worn decimated with annotations and notes 
and passages that I've highlighted or I want it to be like a penguin cloth bound classic where it's completely pristine and gorgeous and perfect. So either, you know, completely torn to shreds or looks like it's never been read before. And those are my two book library moves. So this copy I plan on decimating. This one I figured would be the perfect October Austin. And let me tell you why. Okay. So this one, young, impressionable Catherine Moreland is delighted by her first experience of fashionable society, where she is introduced to the thrills of gothic romances and to the sophisticated Tillies who invite her to their family home, North and Grabby. But there, influenced by the novels of horror and intrigue, Catherine begins to think that terrible crimes are being committed and her imagination threatens to run away with her. Tell me that that does not sound like the most perfect gothic Austin read for this fall. I'm so excited and so excited that I found such a beautiful classics copy to put all my notes into. So the next two are actually YAs. Traditionally, I haven't been a gigantic YA reader. But over the past like six months or so, I've really been diving back into the genre again. Probably have BookTube and BookTok to thank for that. But this one is one that I've been seeing everywhere <laughs> and I've been trying to find a copy of it, but even places like Target and that have been sold out. And that's The Inheritance Games. This one kind of like a western game meets Knives Out. So a teen named Avery is basically left this man's entire fortune and she seemingly has no connection to him. So then when she goes to claim this fortune, she runs into all the family members who are convinced that she's pulling something basically. They try to figure out the connection between Avery and Tobias Hawthorne, who's the one that left her his fortune and lots of riddles and hijinks and secrecy along the way. Y'all already know that this is going to be a great one to dive into in the month of October, so I knew I had to grab it while I had the chance. Here I've got Ruin and Rising. This is the third book of the Shadow and Bone Grishaverse original trilogy by Leigh Bardugo. I already read Shadow and Bone and I've got Siege and Storm, so I really just had to pick up this third one. I never buy series books in advance of when I actually read them, but I knew that I wanted to take a deep dive into this trilogy, really see what the world's about. I also really want to watch the TV show, and so I want to read at least through Six of Crows before I fully dive into it, just because I don't want there to be any spoilers, and I don't want to feel like I'm not in the mood for the books anymore because I kind of already know what happens. So I went ahead and picked this one up. I love the cover art on this one. It might be my favorite of the trilogy. At least I like it better than Siege and Storm because that color palette's like maybe not my favorite, but this fiery red with the bird on the front. I mean, if you know the series, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. I think that'll do it for today's video. Thank you so much, friends, for tuning in. I had the most magical time at Barnes & Noble and so fun getting to share all of my new bookish treats with you. So with that being said, I hope you have a magical day and I'll see you next time.